things, okay, so don't worry about it. But there is a connection, isn't there, between the good soil and the farmer in the sense that what grows in the good soil produces seed that kind of sows itself, doesn't it? Yeah? So there is a connection between what grows and happens in the good soil and the farmer. If you didn't follow that, that's just one of my ramblings, don't worry. What I want you to notice much more is this, is an amazing possibility. What do you think about the kingdom of God? Does it thrill you? Does the possibility thrill you? Because the amazing thing that Jesus says in this passage is that the kingdom of God can be conceived in somebody's life through a seed. We'll look at what the seed is in a moment, but let's marvel at this. I mean, think of a seed. You can see it up there. I've, I've got a bean seed in my hand here. I mean, they are pretty uninteresting things, aren't they? Seeds. You look at it, but they are extraordinary things because in this seed, there is life, isn't there? And when you get it right, it bursts into life. And Jesus says, he is giving us a seed that when it's planted properly, it conceives in someone's life the kingdom of God. Well, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Isn't that an amazing thing? Yeah. That's what God, thank you, that's what God's putting in our hands. A seed. Actually, it looks pretty naff. I wasn't going to tell you this story, but I was just reminded, so sorry. But I remember years ago during a children's assembly, and uh, I was trying to do this kind of, isn't this amazing? And uh, what we dug, we dug up from the garden a um, sunflower plant, which is about eight foot tall, and managed to get it to the school in a pot and sneaked it into the school and hid it behind this curtain. And I uh, just did this assembly about, you know, amazing things happen from seed, and then kind of, ta-da! And there was this thing there, and all these kids just cheered. because it was a, But that's what the kingdom got, isn't it? It's amazing. And it is conceived in people's lives through a seed. That's the amazing possibility. Minimum yield, 30 times what you started with. Minimum yield, 30 times what you started with. And it's true in the natural world, isn't it? You know, bless you. Gardeners have a saying, don't they? Gardeners say after me, one year's seed... Sorry, one year's weed, seven years seed. One year's weed, seven years seed. In other words, if you allow one weed to, al to develop one flower that goes to seed, for seven years afterwards, you have weeds in your garden, that thing. One year's weed, seven years seed. Every plant is pregnant with massive possibilities. That's the kind of image that Jesus is working with here. He's wanting to stir up our imagination about the possibilities of the kingdom of God. What's that? An acorn. This is a trick question, so don't answer it. What is the potential in this acorn? No, not a tree. A forest. That's the potential in an acorn. If you've ever walked around an oak tree late autumn, it crunches because there are thousands of acorns. And like in the parable, not all those acorns produce oak trees, but a percentage of them does. And the potential in an acorn is a forest. That's the kind of image that Jesus is working with. And he never uses the word... But right through kingdom understanding is multiplication. The kingdom does not grow by addition, it grows by multiplication. Jesus lets us into an amazing secret, a secret I have not learnt yet. I accept it up here, but I am not yet seeing it properly in my life. So I haven't learnt it yet. I don't know about you, this whole idea this amazing thing, that when we sow this seed, I'm going to get your attention now, when we sow this seed in the right soil, there is an amazing growth. Are you getting the possibility? Yeah. 
or are you bored? Are you getting the possibility? Yeah. It's extraordinary possibility. And in this room are a load of farmers. <laughs> war, war, war. A load of farmers. Minimum yield, 30 times what you started with. Yeah? What possibilities? What possibilities? Because, got another one here. You see, in you is a load of seed. Because you're not weeds. In you is a load of seed. Because you carry in you the kingdom of God. Immeasurable possibilities are carried within you. And within this room, there are church planters. Within this room, there are people who are going to make a massive, significant difference in their neighbourhood. It's all there. It's in us, because in us is the kingdom of God. And in the West, we have lost the ability to release the church into that kind of growth. And we keep one another in these buildings about religious activities. And Jesus said, I've come, and in me, the kingdom of God is present now. One day this year, I will tell you about what I did on sabbatical. That is a promise. But God keeps delaying it for various reasons. And I think that there is purpose in it, because I think God is delaying it so that actually at the right time, I'm able to share it. But one of the churches I spent some time with, a very interesting church in South End, working amongst the poorest folk, the urban poor, those who are not usually touched by churches. Churches in South End, like churches in Deerham, tend to be full of very nice middle-class people like me. <laughs> and this church is different. They don't meet on a Sunday, actually. They're structured, really, around a series of larger cell groups that meet midweek in people's homes, that eat together, that are touching people with very difficult backgrounds. One of the things I learned was, this is a little aside, was you never say to them, you know, we've got a middle-class code, haven't we? I say to you, how are you? And say, you say, I'm fine, thank you, how are you? And I say, I'm all right, thanks. It's kind of greeting. With these folks, if you say to them, how are you? They tell you. And actually, they tell you some stuff maybe you didn't want to know. Because there's a level of honesty and rawness that actually is quite refreshing and scary. But just, I'm just trying to illustrate this point that the lovely couple I stayed with, uh, Michael and Mandy, uh, Michael is on long-term sickness uh, with some mental health issues and, and physical issues. Mandy is just one of these lovely kind of maternal ladies. And uh, while I was there, one of the church leaders, they called him in and Michael said, I think I've had a bit of a God moment. He said, you know... He said, we've been here. They'd moved out of a very difficult uh, council setting, council house setting, into a new area. He said, you know, uh, the Monday group, because these groups, these kind of congregations they have are quite fragile, and one group had kind of disbanded because people had moved out, one or two other things, and Michael said to the church leader, do you know, um, I'd like to restart that Monday group in our house. He said, you know, Mandy's been around, she's got to know some of the neighbours, and I think they'd come. So if we got one or two and da-da-da-da, you know, here's a guy, I would, if you labelled it on him, he'd probably run a mile. But he's planting a church in his house. Just an ordinary bloke. Don't tell him he's doing that or he might panic. <laughs> but he's doing this thing called multiplication. And Jesus says that's the way the kingdom of God grows. Okay, what do we sow? Well, verse 19, Jesus tells us, didn't he? When anyone hears the message about the kingdom, what does that mean? Well, it's a message about a king and a kingdom, isn't it? It's a message about our wonderful Lord Jesus, who is probably our best kept secret, and about his kingdom. It's a message of possibilities the possibility of living a different way under his kingship now. In order to enter that rule, yes, we have to repent and we have to receive him, but that is not the only thing we proclaim. That's at the heart. But actually many people are too far away to understand that. 
but we proclaim a message about a king 